I'm very happy to be joined from the Holy City by someone of an outlier in this year's race. He's the only leading contender who is secular, Ofer Berkovic. And joining me in studio as well is former member of parliament from the right, Michael Kleiner. It is good to see you both. Thanks for coming on the show. Mm -hmm. Ofer, I want to start with you. Thanks again for coming on The Spin Room. Uh, my first question is, what is the most urgent problem that Jerusalem has in your eyes that is on the top of your agenda that when you enter office, if and when elected, that will be the first thing you take care of? So I think the first problem and the great challenge is about the economic development of the city. Jerusalem is poor. It's known. And if you want to keep here young people, if you want to help uh, poor families to go out from their poorness, if you want to improve the services for the citizens, you need to uh, develop uh, economic development processes in the city to bring here more high tech, more uh, small and medium businesses, more tourism that will impact the economics and units of the government of Israel that are sitting outside of the, of the city that can help and uh, create quality jobs in Jerusalem. Uh, this is the most uh, important uh, uh, challenge and also to integrate the Arab community and the ultra-Orthodox community in this kind of vision. And this, was, this is going to, to be the first challenge I'm going to address as the mayor of Jerusalem. Well, for, uh, since the 90s, basically, the city has become more and more ultra-Orthodox with many young secular people, just as, as yourself, uh, leaving the city. Is that a trend that you want to stop? And if so, how would you do it? Of course. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the biggest problems of the city. That's why uh, I initiated the creation of the movement I'm heading, Itorerut Yerushalayim, Awakening in Jerusalem. Uh, we want to fight this trend. We want to enable quality jobs here. We want to fight for affordable housing for young families. We want to create a vibrant city with great cultural life, with the ability for each community to live according to its perception of life here in Jerusalem. It's clear that Jerusalem is the holy city, but it must be a city the, as the capital of Israel and the capital of the Jewish nation that every a, a community and every person can find himself here comfortably in the city. Michal, really quickly, before we go to our first break, would you agree with uh, Berkovich that the main issue is economics when it comes to the city? Yes, and I want to ask him, what is his rel relative advantage of, to bring a, a occupation and business and industry to Jerusalem in comparison to Elkin or, uh, or, or, uh, or Moshe Leon, Moshe Leon or the other who are uh, okay. more well-connected? I'm going to let him answer that question. Michal, pose the question to you asking, what is your advantage over the main other front runners, Zev Elkin, the Minister of Jerusalem, and of course, other council member Moshe Leon. Both of them, by the way, I shall remind our viewers, are religious. Go ahead. Light religious. <laughs> Light religious. Go ahead. Light religious. So I think I'm the most experienced candidate from all of the others in the municipality field. I was the deputy mayor responsible for economics development, and I initiated a, a new program to encourage young entrepreneurs, technology entrepreneurs in the city by uh, different accelerators, by special incentives, by uh, mentors that we connected with young startupists, and by uh, um, other uh, um, incentives for these kind of communities, by networking events. And this uh, program uh, caused a major change in the city. Uh, from 200 uh, uh, technology companies, we raised the number to 512 in three and a half years. I think I know the city better than the other candidates. I think I know what's not going well on the Jerusalem municipality in order to bring even bigger companies, international companies. We are going to build a new quarter for businesses in the entrance of the city. We have a, a good incentives, tax incentives, 7 0.5 percentage in, in front of 14 in the center of Israel. We're going to have a, 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 a speed train to Tel Aviv of 30 minutes. This is the time to have a great advertisement of the city all over and, and to understand exactly who are the clients and to bring them to Jerusalem. I think I know how to encourage these kind of companies, how to encourage new buildings with modern offices. I brought WeWork to Jerusalem. They're just opening now their new hub in the city center. We're going to have more shared offices like WeWork in the city. And uh, uh, I think I know this term better than any other candidate and have a great uh, program. You can read about it. It's the Berkovich uh, plan for the next decade of Jerusalem.
Ofra, I want to talk a bit about uh, East Jerusalem. Um, about 36% 30, of uh, Jerusalem residents are Muslim, most, mostly of them uh, Palestinians. They identify themselves as Palestinians living in the east part of the city. Hardly any of them uh, vote in the municipal elections. Why do you think they don't vote, and would you want them to participate in these elections? So first, no, usually they don't vote in the uh, municipal election, even though they have the right to vote. Uh, I assume it's the pressure of the Palestinian Authority or Hamas or other organization not to participate this kind of election, not to acknowledge the control of Israel in the east side of the city. I think it's bad for them. I think that in any democracy, if you are integrated, if you are participating, you can have better services and you can have a better voice to represent your needs have you, and your Ofer, claims. Have you, have you tried to reach work, out to them? Have you tried to reach out to in them? Any case, I, I'm not trying to change their uh, way of acting in the elections. I'm, I'm going to work for these citizens as like as any, any other citizens in the city, because I believe that Israel and Jerusalem municipality must take control and do the best for these uh, uh, citizens. They are part of the city, and we need to invest in order to uh, uh, improve their situation, the sanitation, the education system, and also economics development, we must have much more businesses in this part of the city. Okay. So also uh, uh, the taxes for the municipality will be higher and the, uh, um, and the situation of these families will be better. What's your, fact, what's, your, what's your take on that, Michael Kleiner? Because, uh, you know, the fact that the Palestinians don't vote, of the three main leading candidates that we just talked about, Ofer Berkovic, Moshe Leon, and Zev Elkin, it kind of, it would probably help Berkovic the most if they came out to vote, wouldn't it? I, I don't know. Maybe they will help Daesh. They have sometimes connection <laughs> with the Haredi population. Well, Orthodox, they, yeah. they are not coming to vote. They will not come to vote. I, I like very much people who make big declaration, knowing knowing the reality they speak about will never actually happen or occur. Otherwise, they would have been more careful. This is a sensitive question. It is a political question that will find its solution in the political uh, field and not in the municipal field. Okay. Ofer, I want to talk also a bit about the uh, ultra-Orthodox uh, in Jerusalem, about... They, they consist about 34% of the Jewish population, meaning about just over 180,000 people. How can a secular candidate as yourself win the election without that massive Haredi vote? First, I think that the definition as a secular candidate, it's not the right definition. I'm the Zionist uh, candidate, and I represent uh, many of the modern religious people in Jerusalem, traditional people, and other communities. We also have 50% uh, of my list, which are national religious. We also have ultra-Orthodox in my list, and we believe that we must uh, act fairly in front of all of the different communities. There are many ultra-Orthodox that feel not represented by the regular parties of the ultra-Orthodox, and they want to live together with other uh, uh, communities, and I believe that many of them will vote for me, uh, uh, and I will be the next mayor of Jerusalem. Well, you, you said in an interview to the Times of Israel that you would get rid of the ultra-Orthodox extortion. I, are 180,000 people exercising their democ rights, the de democratic rights, is that extortion? I didn't understand, sorry. Well, you said in an interview to the Times of Israel that you would stop ultra-Orthodox extortion in Jerusalem. Am I correct? I said, I said we will have the ability for each community secure in its neighborhoods. Mm. All right. Michal, can uh, Ofer Berkovic win without the uh, Haredi vote? Uh, Ofer Berkovic can maybe pass to the second round, mm -hmm. and in such a case, everyone that will be the candidate who will uh, pass against him as number one as, or number two, it doesn't matter, will be the mayor of Jerusalem, uh, Offer will be in the opposition, will de be deputy uh, uh, mayor. He is also in an agreement with uh, Likud, uh, a list with Elisha Peleg, Machal, which is going with him. So actually, every, every Likudnik should uh, um, vote for Elisha Peleg to the, to the list. And then he has a surplus agreement uh, mm -hmm. with uh, uh, Ofer Berkovich. So uh, they are not, Likud is not against him. 
the official candidate for mayor is Zev Elkin. Now, it is a, the, the game is a game of big numbers. The Gur Hasidim will uh, support Deitch as long as he's a candidate. Uh, uh, the Degel uh, Torah and Shas support Moshe Leon. Uh, the extreme Haredi, it's funny, but because uh, what Degel, everything with Gafni does, they do the opposite, will go with Elkin. The modern Orthodox, once again, in big numbers, of course, some support also offer, but in big numbers, they will go with Elkin, and it will be a very touch and go race. And as I said, he can uh, be number one at uh, round number one, mm -hmm. uh, but he cannot uh, win the uh, mayorship.